Hello everyone, this is John Hashmat and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video, I will be solving the specimen paper 4 exam for the year 2023. So let's get started. Question 1 says, figure 1.1, 1 .1, show speed time graph for a vehicle accelerating from rest. Part A says, calculate the acceleration of the vehicle at time 30 seconds. So this is 30 seconds. We need to use the gradient of the graph. But this part of the graph is a curve, so we need to draw a tangent in order to get the gradient at this point. So if we draw, for example, a line like this, just touching the graph at that point, we can say that this is a good tangent. Not all of you will draw the same exact line or take the same exact points. In this case, I will just take this point as point 2 and this point as point 1. And we have y2 and y1, 26 and 10. And we have x2 at 60 and x1 is at 16. So first we write down the equation that the acceleration is equal to the gradient. And then we substitute 26 minus 10 as y2 minus y1 over 60 minus 16 as x2 minus x1. That gives an answer of 0 0.363636 recurring. So we approximate that to two significant figures because the graph can give us two significant figures. So we write the answer as 0 0.36 and the unit is meters per second squared. Part B says without further calculation state how the acceleration at time t 100 seconds compares to the acceleration at time 10 seconds. Using ideas about forces explain why any change in the acceleration has occurred. So at first the acceleration was decreasing. So at 100 seconds, we have the gradient low and at 10 seconds, we have the gradient high. So at 10 is greater than 100 or at 100 less than 10. And that is due to the air resistance increasing with speed. So the resultant force is actually decreasing against the motion. So we say that acceleration at 100 seconds is less than at 10 seconds. And then we say that as the speed of the vehicle increases air resistance increases so resultant force decreases and this decreases the acceleration part c says determine the distance traveled by the vehicle between time 120 seconds and time 160 seconds in a speed time graph we can get the distance by calculating the area under the graph so from 120 seconds to 160 seconds that would be this area which is a trapezium we have one base on this side equal to 20 and the other base is on the other side parallel to it that's 30 and the height is from 120 to 160 that would be 40 then we say that the distance is equal to the area and we say that the average base which is 30 plus 20 over 2 multiplied by 40 will give us the distance this gives a distance of 1000 meters or 1 times 10 to the power of 3 meters question 2 a says complete the definitions by giving the name of each quantity Mass multiplied by acceleration, that would be resultant force. And force multiplied by time, that would be impulse. Part B says, figure 2.2 shows a man using a golf club to hit a ball. The ball has a mass of 0.046 kilograms. The golf club is in contact with the ball for a duration of 5.0 times 10 power negative 4 seconds. And the ball leaves the golf club at a speed of 65 meters per second. Calculate the momentum of the ball as it leaves the golf club. So momentum is equal to mass multiplied by velocity. So we have 0 0.046 multiplied by 65. That gives an answer of 2.99 Newton seconds. So that would be approximately 3.0 Newton seconds. Or we can use another unit kilogram meters per second. For double I says calculate the average resultant force acting on the ball while it is in contact with the golf club. Force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the time and the initial momentum was zero. So the final momentum, which is 2.99 minus zero over the time of contact, which is four times 10 to the power of negative four seconds. That gives an answer of 5,980. So we can approximate that to 6,000 and the unit is Newtons. Part triple I says, while the golf club is in contact with the ball, the ball becomes compressed and changes shape. State the type of energy stored in the ball during its contact with the golf club. The energy stored due to deformation or changing the shape is called elastic energy or strain energy. So you can write either one. Question 3 says figure 3.1 shows the solar cells that use radiation from the sun to generate electrical power. Part A I says state the name of the process which releases energy in the sun that would be nuclear fusion in all stars. 
double I says describe what happens in this process. We say that two light nuclei join together to form a heavier nucleus and release energy from the reaction. If we had one more mark, we say that there is a loss in mass in the reaction and the lost mass is converted to energy. Part B says, apart from solar cells, there are other energy resources used on Earth for which the radiation from the sun is the main source. State the name of one of these energy resources and explain whether it is renewable or not. So, for example, we have wind energy or hydroelectric or waves. These depend on the sun. These are renewable, or we can say one of the other ones, fossil fuels or nuclear, but nuclear is not dependent on the sun. So if we choose fossil fuels, that would be non-renewable. So in this question, we were asked about energy sources that are dependent on the sun. Tide waves, tide energy is dependent on the moon, and nuclear reactions or nuclear fission reactors depend on the nuclear energy stored in the atoms, not the sun. Part C says state two advantages and two disadvantages of using solar cells to generate electrical power. So one advantage is that it is clean, a clean source of energy or non-polluting. And another advantage is that it has low running cost and that it is renewable. As for the disadvantages, we can say that they are unreliable or dependent on daytime and weather and location also or we can say that they have low efficiency or low output compared to the input or we can say that they need a lot of space or occupy a large space question 4 says figure 4.1 shows a balloon filled with helium that is used to lift measuring instruments to a great height above the earth's surface using ideas about momentum explain how the atoms of helium produce a force on the wall of the balloon we say first that gas molecules move randomly and collide with the walls of the balloon then we say that the change in momentum exerts a force and we can write the equation force is equal to change in momentum over time part b says at ground level the pressure of the helium in the balloon is 1.0 times 10 to the 5 pascal the volume of the helium is 9.6 meters cubed the balloon is released and it rises quickly through the atmosphere. The volume of the helium increases and the temperature of the helium remains constant. Explain why the pressure in the balloon decreases as the balloon rises. You should refer to helium atoms in your answer. So we say that as the volume increases, the area increases and the rate of collisions of the atoms decreases. So this would decrease the pressure. Part double I says calculate the pressure of the helium when its volume is 12 meter cubed. So we can use the equation P1V1 is equal to P2V2 or PV is constant. The initial pressure was 1.0 times 10 to the power of 5 pascal and the initial volume was 9.6. The final pressure is required in the question and the final volume is 12. So we can divide the left hand side by 12 to get the pressure. That gives an answer of 80,000 pascal or we can write it as 8.0 times 10 to the power of 4 pascal. Question 5a says compare the arrangement and the motion of particles in ice and in liquid water. As for the arrangement, it is regular in ice and random or irregular in water. As for the motion, we say that they vibrate, so vibrations or vibration in a fixed position in ice and vibration and exchanging places in water so in solids the molecules vibrate about a fixed position in liquids they vibrate and exchange positions or we can say that they slide over each other part b says a lake has a layer of ice on its surface the area of the lake is 1800 meters squared the ice has a thickness of 0 0.025 meters and the density of the ice is 920 kilograms per meter cubed calculate the mass the mass can be calculated as density multiplied by volume and the volume can be calculated as area by height or thickness so we have the density 920 and the area 1800 multiplied by the thickness 0 0.025 that gives an answer of 41,400. So we can say that is approximately 41,000 kilograms or 41 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms or 4.1 times 10 to the power of 4 kilograms. 
Part double I says at night the temperature of the ice on the lake falls by 3.5 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of ice is 2.1 times 10 to the power of 3 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Calculate the change in energy as the temperature falls. So we can use the equation Q is equal to mc delta theta. So the mass is equal to the one we calculated above 41,400 multiplied by the specific heat capacity 2.1 times 10 to the power of 3 times the change in temperature which is 3.5. That gives an answer of 3.0429 times 10 to the power of 8. So approximately 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8 joules. But we already have the unit here, so we do not need to write it. Question 6a says, figure 6.1 shows a converging lens and its principal axis. The points F1 and F2 are each a principal focus of the lens. An object O is placed between F1 and the lens. On figure 6.1, draw two rays from the top of object O to locate the image and label the image I. So the first ray is actually easy. We can just connect the top of the object to the optical center of the lens and then extend it. But since this type of image will be a virtual image because the object is between the focus and the lens, we need to extend it backwards. So the extension of the ray will form the image. The other ray is drawn parallel to the principal axis, so we can measure this distance on the central line of the lens to connect a parallel ray to the center of the lens. And after that, the ray goes from the center of the lens to the focal point. And these rays do not intersect, so we need to extend it backwards. The extensions will intersect. And the extensions are always drawn as dashed lines to represent that they are not real rays of light they are the extensions of light and we need to add arrows to the diagram to show the direction of the rays so from the object towards the lens and forward and the position of the intersection of the rays that is the position of the image or the top of the image so from this point we need to draw an arrow to represent the image so this is the position of the image and we label the image i and this would be the final shape of the answer Part double I says the object O is moved to the left along the principal axis so that it is further from the lens than F1. Figure 6.2 is a diagram of the new arrangement of the new image shown. So now the image is inverted and larger. Under line 3 of the terms below that describe the image shown in figure 6.2. So it is inverted, not upright, and it is enlarged, not diminished. And it is real. In this case, if the object is further away from the focal point, the image is always real. The rays of light actually intersect. You do not have to extend the rays backwards. Part B says figure 6.3 shows yellow light passing through a glass prism. Blue light now enters a prism along the same path as the yellow light. On figure 6.3, draw the path of blue light as it enters, passes through and leaves the prism. So blue bends more than yellow. And the normal here is like this. It is perpendicular to the surface of the prism. So the bending must not pass the normal line. This is a rule here. And we say that the blue light starting from the same point does not bend away from the normal. It bends towards the normal more than the yellow light. So reaching this point. And then when it goes out into the air, it bends even more with a greater angle. And this would be the final shape of the ray. Question 7a says, state a typical value for the speed of sound in air. So we can say anything from 300 to 360, but the most common one is 340 meters per second. Part B says, a sound wave in air has a wavelength of 22 millimeters. Using your value of speed of sound in A, calculate the frequency of the sound wave. So frequency is equal to speed divided by the wavelength. If the speed is in meters per second, the distance must be in meters. So this is 22 times 10 to the power of negative 3. That gives an answer of 15,454.5, which we can approximate to 15,000 and the unit is hertz. Part C says figure 7.1 shows a solid block made from hot liquid metal. As the liquid cooled, a bubble formed inside the block. The bubble is not visible from outside the block. Describe and explain how to use ultrasound to determine the size and position of the bubble. So this is like the idea of imaging the internal organs of the body or babies in the womb. It uses pulses of sound that are reflected from surfaces. So we say that a transducer, which is the source of the ultrasound, is used to send a pulse of sound or ultrasound. 
from the top of the block and wait to receive the reflection from the top and bottom of the bubble then we can say using the equation speed is equal to distance divided by time and measuring the time of the reflection the distance or the distances can be calculated for the position and size of the bubble so if we take the time for the sound to go to this surface and back and the time for the sound to go to this surface and back we can calculate this distance and then calculate this total distance so this gives us the position of the bubble and this can be subtracted from the larger distance to get the size of the bubble question 8 says figure 8.1 is a circuit diagram calculate the combined resistance between y and z so from y and z we have a total parallel connection but inside the upper branch we have a series connection so we must calculate inside first we calculate 8 plus 4 that gives us 12 ohms and this 12 ohm resistance is in parallel with a 6 ohm resistor so we calculate product over sum so 12 multiplied by 6 divided by 12 plus 6 that gives an answer of 4 ohms so we write 4.0 ohms so that it is in two significant figures as the numbers in the question part b says calculate the potential difference across the 8 ohm resistor so for this branch we have the total voltage of the battery of 24 volts and it is divided on these two resistors according to the resistance in series we have the voltage proportional to the resistance so we can use cross multiplication if 24 volts is given to the total resistance of 8 plus 4 which is 12 ohms how many volts are given to the 8 ohm resistor we multiply 8 by 24 and then we divide by 12 that gives 16 volts as an answer question 9 says figure 9.1 shows a conducting ball that oscillates between two charge plates one of the plate is connected to the positive side of a power supply and the other is connected to the negative side and there is an ammeter connected as the ball oscillates it touches each plate in turn referring to the charge on the ball explain why the ball moves to the positive plate after touching the negative plate we say first that the ball becomes negatively charged so it's attracted to the positive plate and repelled by the negative plate or we say that opposite charges attract and like charges repel part b says state which particles move when there is a current and state the direction in which they move through the sensitive ammeter first the particles that move are the electrons and the direction they move they move away from the negative terminal of the battery and towards the positive terminal of the battery so through the sensitive ammeter it is in this direction from left to right or we say here to the right because it asks about the sensitive ammeter only part c says for each complete oscillation of the ball moving between the plates a charge of 8.5 times 10 power negative 10 coulombs is transferred from one plate to the other and the frequency of oscillation is 4 hertz calculate the current shown on the sensitive ammeter we say first that the current is equal to the charge divided by the time but we do not have the time we have the charge of one oscillation so we need the time of one oscillation which we can call a periodic time and the periodic time can be calculated as one over the frequency so here we can just divide 8.5 times 10 to the power of negative 10 and then form a bracket with 1 over 4 hertz to get the periodic time so this gives an answer of 3.4 times 10 to the power of negative 9 amperes question 10 ai says an americium nucleus decays by the emission of an alpha particle into a neptonium nucleus complete the nuclear equation for this decay so the symbol for alpha is the directly proportional symbol and we have the numbers must be memorized 4 and 2 for alpha and for the neptonium the number of the nucleons or the nuclear number decreases by 4 at the top so 241 minus 4 that gives a, an answer of 237 and the proton number decreases by 2 so 95 minus 2 is 93 Part double I says americium is used in smoke detectors. Explain why beta emitters or gamma emitters are not used in smoke detectors. That would be because they have low ionizing power. So they will not create a large current enough for the detector to work. 
Part B says the half-life of this americium nuclide is 470 years. A sample of this nuclide contains 8.0 times 10 to the power of 14 atoms. And after some time, 6.0 times 10 to the power of 14 americium atoms have decayed. That means that the difference between these numbers is the remaining number of the undecayed atoms. So 8 minus 6, that gives us 2 times 10 to the power of 14 atoms. Calculate the time required for this decay. So from 8, we divide by 2, we give 4, and then we divide by 2 again to reach 2. So we've passed two half-lives to reach the remaining number 2, and each half-life was 470 years long. So we multiply 2 by 470 to get the total time. That gives an answer of 940 years, because the unit here was also in years. Question 11, A says, describe and explain how a stable star is formed. First, we start by saying that hydrogen gas in a nebula is pulled together or closer by gravity. And then we say as particles gain kinetic energy, the temperature increases until fusion starts to form a protostar. Now this heat causes expansion and the gravitation force causes contraction. We say that when the inwards pull of gravity is balanced by the outwards pressure due to heat, the size of the star becomes stable and the star is called a stable star now. Part B says describe and explain what can be deduced from cosmic microwave background radiation or CMBR. We say that microwaves are received or detected from all directions around the earth. This was infrared heat radiation emitted at the start of the universe and then expanded into microwaves which shows that the universe is now expanding so if the wavelength increases that means as the space it takes increases so the space is expanding question 12 says figure 12.1 shows a transformer there are 8000 turns in the primary coil of the transformer the primary coil is connected to a 240 volts mean supply a 6 volt lamp connected to the secondary coil operates at full brightness. This means that it takes 6 volts. So the secondary voltage is 6 volts. Calculate the number of turns in the secondary coil. We can say that Ns over Np is equal to Vs over Vp. And then substitute Ns is required. Np is 8000 turns. And Vs is 6 volts. Vp is 240 volts. And then we cross multiply 8000 times 6 divided by 240. That gives 200 turns. Part B says the current in the lamp is 2.0 amperes. The transformer operates with 100% efficiency. That means power input is equal to power output or primary equal to secondary. Calculate the current in the primary coil. We use the equation for power which is VI. So VI secondary is equal to VI primary. And then we substitute. So the secondary voltage is 6 and the secondary current is 2. The primary voltage was 240 and the primary current is unknown. We divide the left hand side by 240 to get the current, which is equal to 0 0.05 amperes. So this was the end of the paper. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Keep practicing and I will see you in another video.